All right, we are live on our webinar on Facebook groups and sending, getting our parishes online. Welcome to all of our participants. And uh, for this last webinar for our Proclaim series, we've decided at the last minute to also go live on Facebook. We're gonna try this out, so I hope this works. Welcome to all of our participants. Welcome to all of our viewers on Facebook. I'm so glad that you're all here with us today. And if you can hear some noise in the background, uh, it's probably your or our communities um, banging the pots and pans in appreciation for all of the healthcare workers, essential services that are serving our communities in hospitals and in all of the places that, uh, that are still open and that are serving um, this, uh, this is our, our communities right now amidst this crisis. So we give you uh, thanks for all of what you are doing. We're gonna let uh, our participants get online, just give it a few minutes right now, because um, I can still hear some pots and pans going out uh, in my community and I'm pretty sure it's happening in yours. So if you feel like you need to get out there and just get one more scream out, feel free to do that. Um, I know my kids are out there, they're screaming, I can hear them. Uh, today was the first day back to school for Catholic schools and I've got four kids in school and they, I mean, there was a lot of learning today, a lot of like steep learning curves. So I'm sure some of you as well have experienced that first day back to us uh, to school in a new reality. So like I said, we are, we've gone live on Facebook. This is the first time we're trying this and I appreciate um, I appreciate your patience with us and I'm going to ask for forgiveness in advance if we if we do something kind of funny technologically. Uh, but for those who are online with us right now in the webinar on Zoom, uh, I want to invite you and welcome you here and you are more than welcome to, uh, to let us know where you're coming from, the parish, uh, the city, and uh, you, know, you can use the chat box at the bottom. And throughout the webinar, if you have any questions or any thoughts, please put them in the chat bar and use the Q&A at the bottom. And we're gonna make sure that we spend a, a decent amount of time at the end trying to answer some of these questions. But uh, before we get into it, and before I introduce these wonderful people that are online with me, uh, let's take some time to pray. And I'd, I'll lead us in a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. And as we have entered into Holy Week, the most important week of the year, we celebrate uh, the, the passion of our Lord Jesus. We give thanks for the gift of faith. We give thanks for all of the blessings in our lives. And amidst this pandemic, uh, we pray for all of our essential services, government leaders, church leaders, all those affected um, directly by the pandemic, by COVID. God, we know that you have a great plan for each and every one of us. And in that plan, there is good. And so whatever we're facing, whatever, whatever trials, whatever um, personal sacrifices we've been invited to, please allow us to, uh, to bring that to Jesus and let him redeem us. And in this time, let us continue on the mission to share Jesus with others. Um, I'm thankful for this opportunity to use technology to, to share the mission and to continue going closer and closer to your son Jesus during this time in Holy Week. And we pray all this in his most holy name. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So we are here with a number of individuals uh, from St. Anthony of Padua Parish in Vancouver. Uh, I'm joined by a portion of their social media team, Sean Kingsley, Peter Lee, and Marge Torrey. I'm so glad that you're with us. And we also have a, a silent member of our team. His name is Josh Canning, uh, but he's got a lot to say. So if you wanted to chat, he's, uh, he's on our chat bar and on Facebook as well. So if you wanted to chat with him on Facebook for those who are jumping in live on Facebook, you are more than welcome to do that. And uh, Josh used to work for Alpha. Uh, he also is a social media guru. He's taught me a lot. And so as we dive right into online communities, Facebook groups, um, I'm, I'm sure he will also be a, uh, just a wealth of information as well. Now, if you've been on, our, uh, what, on any of our webinars before, you know that I take the opportunity before we get right into our topic to share a little bit about Proclaim. And so if you've heard this multiple times, 
Um, I will ask you to bear with me, but I, I'm so passionate about Proclaim and its mission and what we're, uh, what we're about and, and how the Archdiocese is, uh, is moving towards encouraging and growing missionary disciples. So Proclaim is a movement of the Archdiocese of Vancouver that was launched in October 2019 as a response to Pope Francis' invitation to the whole church to observe an extraordinary month of mission. It's a movement inspired by the Holy Spirit to inspire disciples to share Jesus with others. And I want to share a paragraph from Evangelii Gaudium, a letter from Pope Francis, that provides a founding tenet to the Proclaim mission. So from paragraph 27, he says, I dream of a missionary option. That is a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything. So that the church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitably challenged for the evangelization of today's world rather than for her self-preservation. Now, while Proclaim was launched to inspire a missionary impulse, we have seen COVID-19 become the impulse that has changed everything. This pandemic has affected families, schools, economy, travel, business. Ultimately, there hasn't been a part of life that hasn't been affected by COVID-19. All of our parishes have closed their doors. Public masses have been canceled and ministry events and programs have paused. Now, while COVID-19 certainly presents challenges for parishes, sacramentally, financially, and in ministry, I think Pope Francis offers another way to look at these challenges. So when we look at the following paragraph in Evangelii Gaudium, paragraph 28, he goes on to say that the parish is not an outdated institution precisely because it possesses great flexibility. It can assume quite different contours depending on the openness and missionary creativity of the pastor and the community. While certainly not the only institution which evangelizes, if the parish proves capable of self-renewal and constant adaptivity, it continues to be the church living in the midst of the homes of her sons and daughters. I love that. It continues to say, it does not become a useless structure out of touch with people or a self-absorbed group made up of a chosen few. It's a community of communities, a sanctuary where the thirsty come to drink in the midst of their journey and a center of constant missionary outreach. So the challenge presented to us here at this time is not one of self-preservation due to closures and social distancing, but one of missionary creativity, self-renewal, and constant adaptivity. We really are invited to live in the domestic church in our homes and to be missionary outposts to serve our wider community through creativity and adaptivity. Our parishes may be closed, but the church never stops. So with this missionary creativity in mind, Proclaim has taken the opportunity to share a series of webinars designed to help you on mission. <clears throat> they are in a sense a response to many of the questions and challenges that have been raised in the last few weeks. So we're very blessed to have the, a portion of the St. Anthony of Padua social media team, Sean Kingsley, Peter Lee, and Marge Torrey. And we're so ready to hear some of the, um, I guess, the emergency responses that you've taken uh, in the last number of weeks, the fruits that you've seen in all of it, and plus just the um, just the, the, I guess, the wisdom that and the learning that you've, um, you've taken, um, you know, over time in, in building up your online community, particularly with Facebook groups. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to the team. I'm going to pull myself back and I'm just going to remind all of you, if you do have some questions that you want to pose to us, you're welcome to put it into the chat bar in the, in the Zoom chat. And for those of you who are live on Facebook with us, you can throw it in there as well. Josh Canning will be doing double duty. He'll go back and forth with Facebook and Zoom to help us uh, navigate and to throw out the questions. And we will make sure that we we'll, we'll, we leave ample time at the end to answer some of these questions. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna hand it over to Sean here and Marge, and I'm so looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Over to you guys. Thanks, Eric. Um, 
just going to share my screen real quick. Hopefully everyone can see that. And essentially we're going to go through a little bit of a road, you know, three weeks, less than three weeks ago, we were not on, on, online. We didn't have any Facebook pages or any YouTube channels or anything like that. Uh, it's been a short little while, but um, uh, we definitely, um, I'll let you know the road that we took. And then uh, Marge right here, she's a professional in, uh, in marketing online, and she is our professional that helped us tremendously get on board pretty quick. Um, first of all, we want to say thank you to the Archdiocese of Vancouver and its Proclaim initiative. We all appreciate the guidance, support, and initiatives that are provided to all of us. You know, and especially during these times of uh, epic pandemics, um, it, it is really useful and we appreciate everything that the Archdiocese does. Um, going on to the next slide. So this is our vision at our parish. Um, with the Eucharist at the center, we are a community designed to be saints, sent out to love like Jesus and proclaim him in every instance. Our vision has become so much more attainable just within the last few weeks because we launched our online initiative. So we hope that all of your parishes' um, visions and missions um, expedites along with coming online with, with, with everyone. Sorry, I, I'm trying to, I don't, I'm used to working in my office where I have like three screens set up and now I'm working from one little screen. It's, <laughs> So be it. Um, so yes, this is, uh, oh, sorry, I got the wrong screen. That's our father, Justin. He's, he's our leader. He's our number one uh, character as well. Uh, in less than three weeks, uh, our parish, St. Anthea Padua, went online. For years, Je Father Justin has been wanting to get our parish communication efforts online. So thankfully, he saw the moment to call an emergency task force meeting. He called out to those who he and the leaders of our church thought could help bring our parish online and quickly. He created essentially three, sorry, I'm, three committees were created. One was for overall strategy committee, one was technology committee, and one was communications committee. You can see on your screen right there, essentially, the overall strategy is your leaders of the church, you know, the ones that are guiding the way. Uh, technology are obviously the people that uh, know how to work their way around cameras, computers, audio and video. It's very important, especially when you want to do live masses. Um, and then communications, uh, social media, communication skills, knowledge, expertise. Um, a wide range of different people joined us. Um, it's going to slip. Okay. So our communications committee exchange is from Zoomers. I just learned that, that word. I learned that same day. I didn't know what a Zoomer was until uh, we all got together during this emergency task force meeting. Um, mixture of millennials, baby boomers, ranging in all ages. Uh, we were amazed at the amount of enthusiasm, ideas, and giving attitudes our group had, especially the Zoomers. Uh, they're, 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 they really want to help out as much as possible. And they got a lot of ideas as well, too. Everyone possesses different God-given talents, skills, and interests. When you create your group, start by introducing yourselves and sharing what talents, gifts, professions, and or hobbies. To keep the group focused, we agreed to divide and conquer and created subcommittees. This way, you can have smaller groups working on different aspects of your communications efforts. Your parishes have individuals that possess talents that will be useful in getting you started. If not, watch YouTube or Google. I'll do it. When you don't know how to do something, you So, first of all, you got to understand your parish's audience. Well, your parish is your audience, but you got to understand your audience. And we essentially, uh, you know, our parish demographic, it ranged and stuff. But once we got online, we noticed that there were a lot of uh, women ages 35 to 55 in the beginning, the first week. It was mostly women leading leading the way for our online community. Um, so, you know, pretty much we did notice that. And we actually asked, you know, a lot of our parishes, friends and family came in. Uh, you can tell there's people from all over the world uh, that joined our Facebook group as well. 
um, we actually even created new parish uh, parishioners um, to our parish through our online efforts. Um, another thing to notice, sorry, I won't go through that. A lot of stuff that we don't need to go through. Um, sorry. Last minute, I, I kind of changed this whole presentation around, but I'm going to skip all that. We all share the same passion here, which is our love for Jesus. So ask, for, ask your parish for help. As Eric said earlier on our briefing call, it's not a mountain we need to climb, but rather just getting over that first hill. And he's right. Once you start making those first steps, how fast things happen and where your group's strengths and weaknesses can be. Stay positive, energized, and focused. First, you need to decide what online platforms you plan on utilizing. Each social platform has different purposes, usually different demographics, and definitely different ways to use each one. We won't go into details on each pl platform. There are countless of online articles to educate yourself about that online. But um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, which is probably not relevant for our parishes, Instagram, and one called TikTok. I don't have one yet, but... <laughs> We're, we're being pushed to create TikTok. Um, we focus on Facebook business page and Facebook group, uh, plus YouTube, of course. Uh, we're planning to launch Instagram in a podcast. It's important to designate early who will help be admins and moderators for your social channels. Um, next, we went into branding. Essentially, we never had any branding from our parish. We, we were, like I said, we, we weren't online. We didn't have any logos. You know, we were pretty ambitious in the beginning. We wanted to create a logo. We wanted to go uh, create color palettes and have all these documents prepared and even business cards. Um, but, you know, eventually it came down to the colors. Um, you know, a small tip of advice. If you're starting out getting online, just pick some nice colors and just just start creating um you know pretty much we actually had to use we asked for permission to use our diocese of vancouver's logo if you look at our youtube channel we still use that logo because we don't actually have a logo yet um so you know thankfully as churches and parishes we have a lot of resources already available for us to to really kick things off pretty quickly and stuff um, one of the best tools that, that we are really utilizing is this website called Canva. Canva, you know, we use a free, uh, the free version right now. We haven't made that leap to, to pay for it, but we haven't found the need to do so because a lot of the resources they provide really just get the job done and make all of our uh, design efforts look beautiful and, and whatnot. Um, so definitely use Canva. You can make anything, as you can see, poster, Facebook pages, uh, posts, invitations, logos, like even our emails we're sending from the Tilma platform, um, they're pre-created in Canva and then we migrate it over to the Tilma system. So it's definitely a great resource that everybody should utilize. Looks like I'm gonna pass this on to Marjorie. Marjorie, you wanna take, take the mic? She's our expert. Oh, can hear you. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, I didn't really see this slide yet, but um, okay. Just um, before we started with our Facebook group, we already had a business page. But the problem with business page nowadays, it wasn't like five to ten years ago where um, you can you can get ninety to one hundred percent organic reach right now you will be lucky to have like two to five percent that's the average because it has become um it has become um a pay-to-play platform for facebook with the direction that they're taking right now mark zuckerberg um already announced that the future is private so what does it mean the future will uh the future of facebook or the directives that they're going is to support communities because remember um mark zuckerberg founded facebook uh with the intention to connect people so he's supporting um this initiatives right so um just to get this out of the way why facebook um, so, um 
instead of the other platforms that are available out there. The reason is that because one third of the world's population is already on Facebook. And um, yeah, so 66% of these people actually are visiting Facebook on a daily basis with an average use of one hour a day per user. So really that's a no brainer why we chose Facebook because it can be super overwhelming to bring your offline community, uh, offline business or brand online. So it, it's very important to choose one platform to start with and get really good at it before entertaining the idea of omnipresence and um, scaling, right? So it's, it's important to at least have one and we chose Facebook for that. Um, the reason also why we used, um, when, when we were called to um, talk about the emergency task force meeting, we, the, we established the goal. The goal was to bring the, the Sunday Mass live online as soon as possible. So how could we do that? So we are actually, we were able to do it in four days. So if, I don't know if you remember, Sean, we had a meeting on a Wednesday and then Thursday we created the group. We sent the invite to all our lists, like email lists, um, all the alpha lists, the ministries, and then invited them to join the group. On the third day, we already have like 300 members. And on the day of the mass, we had 423 members um, that are part of that community. And then, um, which resulted to 471 live viewers on our Sunday mass. So, um, I think that's the fruit that we we have. Um, um, what do you call this? <laughs> gained from from creating a Facebook group, and um, maybe some of you there are asking why face. Uh, I mean, um, why maintain the Facebook page when Facebook group is the way to go? You will still need um, Facebook page because the audience insights are also also very important. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so let me just go through this slide that Sean has shown. Um, this is what our Facebook group looks like. So if you can see, there's um, a call to action wherever possible. Call to action, why? Because Facebook users, if you understand why, um, what kind of uh, people are on Facebook, they're the kind of people who are like scrolling their newsfeed, right? So you have to make it really a no-brainer for them to engage like uh, putting a call to action prompts everywhere you can so in our case we have a call to action in our cover photo itself it says visit the group with the arrows pointing down to our um, button which is visit group and that button takes people directly to our facebook group and then what else do we have there? Oh, we want to maintain our Facebook page because uh, it, it, it's still a place where uh, we can put all the information about our, our brand, our, our parish, our location, our mission, and also our Facebook page inbox is hosted right in the page. Um, yeah, so the next, the next step is to visit the group if you want more. Um, I don't know if I can answer questions here in the chat. Does your parish have a Facebook page or groups? Yes, we do have both. Again, why we need both is because Facebook page is um, a platform where we get to know who our audience is. It tells us who they are, their age, their gender, um, where they're from. Why is it important for us? It's very important in terms of creating content, right? You want to be creating content that are relevant to the kind of people that you are serving. And in our case, uh, because of our audience insights, we found out that majority of our people are actually women. 70% are made up of women. And also that most of them are in the age bracket of 34 to 54 years old. So the kind of content that we should be creating should um, 
match the expectations of these people. And also through audience insights, we found out that most of them are mobile users. I mean, they access Facebook through their mobile. So what does it tell us? It tells us to make sure that our content are mobile friendly, right? Because sometimes um, it gets out of proportion. Um, what else? What are you doing today to support the community of your parish? Um, sorry, what, what does it mean, Emma? I can answer that one. Do we want to wait until the end to answer oh, okay. questions or answer them here? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I get distracted with chat. Um, basically, that's what I wanted to share. And also, um, I also want to share the, the part that a Facebook group plays in the overall picture of where we're going. So we wanted the Facebook group to nurture everyone. So we have different platforms for different content. Like we have a Facebook, uh, we have um, Oh, just, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute you. Um, okay, so we, we have different platforms. So we have YouTube for video content. We have um, blog, Father Justin's blog, where he saves all his um, um, homilies. And then we also have, eventually, Sean, I think, we're going to have Instagram and podcast. And all of them, we're going to use the Facebook group to direct people to the preferred platform that they want to hang out in and still consume our content. But where you really nurture them is inside the Facebook group because it's, it's a community um, platform where it's, it's not just the admins and the owner of the page who provide content. It's, Really, there are, a lot, there are a lot of questions that are being asked in the group that also the other members are answering, you know? So um, it's, it's really like a, a community online. Um, what else do we have here? Um, do you have other slides? <laughs> um, this, like, this Sorry, is that too loud? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So, so the previous one that you showed was the Facebook page, right? And this one is the Facebook group. So what we have in our Facebook group is um, the ability to invite other members. And um, there are topics of interest that we can, we can actually categorize using the units tab. Um, yeah. And um, with our Facebook group, why we have better engaged people how we were able to do that is to grab every opportunity where they can engage in every post with a call to action every time. So when, when people join the group, the admins always welcome them in a post tagging each new member. So they get tagged. So what happens is that they get notified. And then when they get notified, usually they would like the post, comment, or share. So um, yeah, I think oh, for the best tips and practices. <laughs> hey, Marjorie, Marjorie, I'm just gonna back up a little bit. Okay. So so Marjorie taught me this actually, and I love it. You know, like I I work in the mining industry, and I I handle a lot of uh, communications efforts for a lot of different companies, but I didn't know the difference between pages versus groups. I only learned this a few weeks ago from Marjorie, um, what importance a Facebook group is versus a page. So I'm, I, I wrote a little bit that I'm going to go, uh, I don't want anyone to miss this. So the Facebook page is like your welcome sign in front of your parish, in front of your church. It's informative, it's simple, and it's formal. Well, some churches also include humor statements, but those are some churches. Uh, your page is your first contact point for new people. You can consider it your front door. People come to learn more about your church, its leaders, the information and services you provide. Notice how we included two call to actions. Um, that is to go to the party, but I just got to pull this up real quick. Um, 
the front door page is mandatory. You have to have a business page. It, it, there's a lot of limitations unless you're actually pay, paying, but we're actually churches. You know, we don't have big marketing budgets to get on people's news, news feeds. So we won't have as much uh, influence on people's news feeds as possible. Um, but the front door is mandatory to get into our community. And that's where all the fun starts. Uh, like uh, Marjorie also said, you know, your front, your page is also where you receive your inbox messages as well. Um, just want to skip here real quick, see what else we got. So this is our, our group. This is where the party is. If, if I go back real quick, we probably have only 365 people uh, follow our, our, our page, but on our group, we have over 800 people on there. And you know, that's because, you know, it's, it's, it's where the fun is, it's where the community is. And you know, it's, it's, it's where the conversations happen. Actually, we've been fortunate enough for our community to kind of take over our, 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 our group, our community where pretty much they are, you know, posting. So we don't really have to. And, March, you got something to add? Um, actually, when we started our Facebook, it also helped growing our our Facebook page. Because at that time, if I remember it right, that was um, around 59, 69 likes or followers. And when we started our uh, Facebook group, whenever they engage with a post, say, say for example, they react to a post, as an admin, you get to invite them to like and follow your page. So that's what we've been doing in the early stage. So that's how we grew our, our Facebook uh, page as well. So um, I, if you remember before, I showed you like how, how the Facebook group plays an important role in the entire framework, right? Um, we always drive people back and forth from the Facebook group. And that's what happens when, when they visit and they're like nurtured in the group you want to take them back to like your facebook page you want to get them to subscribe to your youtube channel get them to sign up to your um, parish uh, registration if they haven't already get them to also subscribe to the blog or instagram eventually so and then if people uh happen to uh stumble upon the Instagram first or podcast first, then you want to take them back to the group because that's where the party happens again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know Marge touched on calls to action, but calls to action is, is probably in the most part, most important of your online communications. You know, like I said earlier, your online community may kick off with a lot of momentum, but eventually it's going to slow down. It always does. So you got to be ready to be able to engage activities, call for actions that you ask them to do something like post or write, uh, uh, respond to, to something could be funny, could be fun, could be uh, uh, interesting. It could be serious as well too. Uh, we had some examples here. Uh, we asked our community to share their Sunday mass uh, at home setup. And that was great because everyone's showing all their different setups with all their tables and their crosses and, uh, Mary's and you know it, it was it was a good community uh, gathering that everyone shared and we followed up with uh, a bit of a collage to say thank you for sending in all your information so they feel they're part of the community and they're interacting um, with with the parish um, we also uh, every single week week we have Father Justin here uh, he does a Q and A's live uh, we do live calls on Zoom. Q and A's, we try to gather as much questions as possible online prior to the call. But you know, because we have this strong character in Father Justin, he can actually just run with the punches and you know, he, he answers anything on the spot there and then. Uh, it, it's an amazing time. Uh, our par parishioners and visitors and family and friend love spending time uh, with Father Justin, uh, as we all do. Um, <laughs> this is a great one. So um, a few, four days ago, we started our drive-through adoration chapel. 
um, to give everyone an opportunity to uh, spend time in the Adorational Chapel outside. So we set up uh, Adoration Chapel at our kindergarten uh, parish uh, school uh, window where people can drive right up and spend time within their cars in a safe distance. And so while we're there uh, filming Father Justin uh, doing the commencement, um, I asked uh, Father Justin if we can get a, a picture of him. And, you know, like I said, we need help. You know, being online, we can only do so much. And so uh, one of our one of our team members suggested, well, we need one of those Uncle Sam saying, we want you. <laughs> Fair enough. Father Justin's like, okay, if that's what you want. And so I took about four or five pictures and that picture when I got home turned into a, am I right if I say GIF or a GIF? Both. <laughs> They're both right. I'm getting this lingo, just like church lingo too. And yeah, so, so we made a GIF about that and, and everyone loves the funness out of being a part of the Facebook community or our group. And so keep it fun, keep it lighthearted, keep it going, keep, keep talking and stuff um talk about events so we have we have a lot of events going on uh we want to keep everyone as active as possible you know uh we don't want to stop live masses so we do online live masses and i think we're doing two right now but during holy week i think peter correct me if i'm wrong i think we're doing four live live at on home at home online masses and you know it's 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 great because we all can stay home. We all can be close, especially during this special week of the year. Um, going to skip down to the next one. So what's really important, and this is just a little, little tip we're learning as well too. But if you look at this image right here, this is one of our events that we created for our Palm Sunday. And, um, our co-chair, Christelle, uh, she posted this uh, only a few days ago. And because uh, it's an event, and Eric Eric would know about this too, um, when someone posts it, you can't post it as an admin. So uh, another super tip, uh, if you want to keep it very kosher, very, uh, you know, you can create a St. Anthony, uh, well, create your own parish's uh, Facebook uh, individual uh, account and treat it as a human, but use that account to post events so you don't see uh, your colleagues or your coworkers or, or your collaborators um, posting on behalf of the church. Um, I forget what I wrote here, but I think this is really good. Give me one sec. Oh, it, it's out of order. Um, this is also great. So this is our past week. Um, we actually, if you look at Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, at the very top, we actually made theme days for each of our days. And this is going to help your social team create content uh, for future weeks ahead. Um, it does take a lot to, you know, keep, uh, keep the engine moving, keep the, the wheels turning. So um, having content days or, or theme days really give an opportunity to get ahead of things and you can pre pre create content uh, for you to roll out during the week. So uh, that was something that, uh, you know, has been such a, a blessing for us. So no one gets really overworked too much. Um, maybe I shouldn't go into this. <laughs> I wonder why I have a picture like that. Um, before before we end it, like maybe we'll go to Q and A. So yeah, so here are some guidelines. Voice of your parish. Keep in mind, whoever's controlling your social media is speaking on behalf of your parish. And also to add to that first one, find um, Marjorie. What what's that token word you use for Father J Justin? The character. Oh. Um yeah, we did on, I think we did it on day three or day two. We asked Father Justin to create a welcome video and then we pinned that in the, like the welcome. As soon as people, uh, as soon as people join the group, that's the first thing that they're gonna see. Father Justin welcoming them in a one minute video just to create that attractive character persona because um, in a congregation, right? like. People come together because of that attractive character, and that's what happened to our community. We are all in um, one because 
we all have the same interest. We, we share the same um, fondness <laughs> for Father Justin. And yeah, so that, that, that's a good thing about Father Justin. You tell him what to do and he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, secondly, divide and conquer. So we set up subcommittees. Uh, we had our communications committee, uh, probably about a dozen of us, you know, from young to old. And we found out uh, everyone's hobbies and skills and talents and what they enjoyed doing. And everyone, you know, because of our passion, the number one thing in business to be uh, successful, you first have to have passion. And because we have the passion for the same thing, which is God, uh, it's easy for us to to really come together and to offer as much time as and talents as possible as we can. Um, so uh, we decided to create several different subcommittees so we can divide and conquer. So no one's getting inundated on on everything that's going on within the the group. Um, so we had, you know, for instance, we had a, a leadership uh, group that approves and supports uh, the rest of the group. We had a content creation committee and also an editing and design committee as well. And of course, it's going to overlap and stuff. And, you know, that's good. But at least it's not getting inundated with too much information what's going on. Um, second, you know, this is very important for everyone, uh, leaders of the parish, is to safeguard your parish. Make sure that all your direct emails for your communications is confidential. Create new Gmail accounts so that the communications team can utilize to create all the different platform accounts and logins and all that kind of information. Um, what else we got? Um, and then care for your volunteers. You know, we we are all volunteers except for Peter over there, or you know, a handful of people at your church. You know, their staff. And, you know, the rest of us are all volunteers and we all have day jobs or I hope we all have day jobs at, in today's time. Um, but spread the workload out uh, as much as possible. Check in on everyone's well-being, you know, really pat everyone on the back because we are all volunteering our time for the efforts of our church. Um, and then finally, pretty much have fun, be creative, think outside of the box. You know, this is, you know, the Facebook group is where your community comes together and let them post stuff, you know, obviously monitor it, have people that are admins and stuff, but, you know, just have fun with it. And, and, and like, I don't have a post or a picture of it, but for Father Justin's Q&A last week or a few days ago, we're like, ask Father Justin anything. We mean anything. And, you know, pretty much people were asking him anything, like what's his favorite Star Trek or Star Trek or Star Wars or, you know, everything. It keeps it lighthearted, and especially these days and time. Um, Eric, I think, I think we're, we're pretty complete with this right now. Yeah, that's great. There's been so much you guys have shared. Wonderful. Thank you for the slides. I'll get you to stop the share screen and we're going to go right into some Q&A because there are a ton of questions coming through, which is amazing. And, um, and I'm not even sure where to start. But Peter, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, Peter is the uh, evangelization and discipleship coordinator for St. Anthony of Padua, but uh, your role has changed as well to kind of, you know, encompass social media given you know, the pandemic and all that stuff. Now, from a missionary perspective, how, has you, how have you seen social media and this Facebook group um, contribute to the overall mission of, of St. Anthony's? Great, uh, great question, Eric. Yeah, um, as uh, Sean showed, our, our parish vision was um, with the Eucharist at the center, we're a community designed to be saints, sent out to love like Jesus and to proclaim in every circumstance. And when you have a physical church, uh, you can do that physically. But in these times when the physical church is um, sort of put on hold temporarily, our, our primary means of evangelization and reaching out even to our own parishioners has become online and through social media. So all our efforts actually have been directed that way. We've shifted the entire parish energies this way towards uh, social media and being online. And our Sunday mass has always been the focus of, of our discipleship and evangelization. So that's why Father Justin and the leadership team decided to make the Sunday mass experience the primary focus um, starting this social media uh, initiative. And yeah, if you attend our, our Sunday Mass, we, we put a lot of energy, a lot of um, quality into it. Uh, Father, at first he said, let's get 20 cameras. 
<laughs> of course, we've only worked up to, I think, two now or three. <laughs> three. Um, so we're getting there. We have three now. Awesome. Uh, we've improved, yeah, the, the choirs. We improved the, the sound, the music, the audio, uh, visual, everything. I mean, the, the whole experience of Mass needs to be as best as it can be. And this Sunday, I think, is we, we've been moving by strides every weekend. And this past weekend, some of the feedback we got was, uh, wow, Peter, I, I feel like I could smell the incense through my screen. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Wow. So when you do, uh, when you, when you uh, uh, share and live stream Mass, a lot of the announcements around it uh, and comments and, and all that stuff, does that come through groups, the Facebook group? Yep, all our promotion goes, well, well there's three ways. We do it mainly through uh, Facebook, yep. and then we do email updates, Okay. Um, and we update on our website as well. Okay, gotcha. Uh, those are the gotcha. three main ways of communication right now. Am I right, guys? Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I'm going to point out one thing, though, that we don't forget about everyone because we know our audience. Not everyone is online or has Facebook. We have converted some people that never had Facebook to create Facebook to be with us. But um, maybe Peter can quickly tell, tell everyone, you know, we're doing these care calls. Yeah, I think someone asked that question, how we're connecting with those who are maybe more elderly and um, are not as tech savvy. Yeah, we launched a, a massive care call initiative um, to call every single registered parishioner um, in our, in our database. So you just have to assemble like a team of volunteers because we can't all do it. And in a time of crisis, I have to say, is when people usually step up, they realize people are in need and people are more willing to help during this time. So don't be afraid to ask people. People want to help during this time. So we have a ton of volunteers and we call everyone. Um, and we're gathering data, basically seeing what do they need, right? Do they need grocery? Do they help with uh, getting medication? Do they even need help? Um, are they suffering from loneliness or depression? Um, so once you gather that data, then you can see how best to meet the needs of your parishioners. So if, if you're noticing a lot of them are, are suffering from loneliness or depression, then what we do is we're gonna form a team of people who are gifted with listening, encouragement, charisms, and call them and continue to keep in touch that way. Those we call, we, we always ask them, are you connected with us online? What is your, your uh, updated email? And how can we help you to get online? So some of the feedback already is um, a lot of parishioners can get online and they didn't actually know about our live stream mass. So we've actually helped quite a few people come encounter us through a Sunday mass experience by helping them uh, with these phone calls. So that's amazing because it gives you a chance to take the initiative and people really value that. So that's, that's wonderful. Now, Peter, Sean, Marge, it sounds like you have quite a large volunteer base. Uh, and I saw a couple of questions around that, you know, sort of volunteer team size. Uh, if, if a parish wanted to get online and to initiate a, an active Facebook group, what would you say, how would you, like, what would be the recommended volunteer size that, uh, that you could, you could suggest? Uh, volunteer size to, to start a social media? Yeah. Being online? Well, our team, let's see, how big is our team? 10, 11? 10 or 11, okay. Like that. A dozen. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you, need, you need strong leadership. Uh, so, yeah, so thank you to Sean, who is our communications chair. Okay. Uh, we also have a co-chair. We need yeah. um, experts like Marge. Um, the rest of the team are involved with um, audiovisual editing, uh, graphics design. Um, okay. the, the, the millennials who know how to like blog and type and, and keep everything up to date. And right now we're finding, that's why we created that, that we want you because as this endeavor grows, you need more and more people. We're finding we're, we don't have enough people now and we need to ask for more help. Okay. Um, Aren't you got a more simple, uh, s simple answer to that? Just, just you mean online on Facebook page or doing the online masses and everything? Um, well, I think it sounds like one of the questions was just in general, how many volunteers does this take to spread the workload? I, my anticipation is that just depending on how big you, uh, you decide to grow both your Facebook group, social media overall, plus live streaming and all that stuff, it's going to require a variety of, um, I guess skill sets 
and certainly we do want to spread the workload out. And uh, what I appreciated from you guys and hearing your story was um, how each of you have a different skill set. And the parish, Father Justin, Peter, you guys invited people to contribute to the church's mission and to the community with the skill set. Sean, you're a communications guy in the mining industry. Marge, you're a social media professional. So, you know, you're able to offer, you know, um, your passions, your skills, and your gifts to, to the community. And so I think that's where a lot of our parishes can be encouraged by this time in, in, in realizing we have a lot of good people who want to offer their skills to, to the mission. I, I think I would, we would need at least like just to manage Facebook alone. I think uh, five people, four people for the Facebook group because it's more engaged and, and the, because there's more demand on the Facebook group part, right? Right. Okay. Posting, there's um, quality checking and there's also welcoming people and making sure that you approve the, the new members. Right. And, yeah. I think that's, heavy enough for one person, one person for posting, one person to, you know, to quality check and make sure that the questions that are not answered by other members would be answered by, by the page. Okay. So I think four people for the group and one for the page. Okay. So how did Father Justin identify and find you guys? <laughs> Cause it kind of sounds like, you know, you're, you're right in your lane. How do we find people like that in all of our parish communities? Holy Spirit. I <laughs> I, I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, these people were with us. Um, and in the time of need, I, I think, I think God provides. Um, yeah. Sean, Sean has, has been with us not too long, but uh, he, he's been offering us, us help here and there. Uh, Marge is part of our alpha team. Um, I mean, th these volunteers are there. And, and when we, we decided to start this initiative, we started going through our heads. Okay, who would be, um, yeah, who would, we, would be good for this? Who that we know has a passion for this? Who do we know that has a talent for this? So Eric, I'm sure you, you, you talked about this before. You know, when there's talent, passion, and need, when they all meet, that's the sweet spot, right? So um, yeah, go with that. There, there's the, there are people in your parishes that have these talents and want to give. And there are people in your parishes who have this passion and want to give. And the time is now. There's definitely that need. I think as well, uh, knowing St. Anthony of Padua and hearing some of your stories, I know that uh, the parish itself does a ton of outreach, uh, primarily through Alpha. And, uh, and both you, Sean, and, and Marge shared some you know, very moving stories of how Alpha invited you into the St. Anthony of Padua family, really. Uh, Sean, you're not even, you're, 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 you're moving towards becoming Catholic. And, uh, and I love hearing your story. You know, we might have to have you guys come on you know, another time and, and be able to share some of that, you know, Lives Change perhaps series, but we're gonna stick to social media. And, uh, and I have another question. Uh, if a, <clears throat> If a, if, a, if a parish is, is supposed to have, you know, both the page, kind of the front door, bulletin board, poster, and a group, is there some content that's more appropriate to page versus group, or is there some overlap? Um, for page, I would like to think of it as a, as a newspaper, you know, like um, something more formal, more safe, more... Um, like, yeah, the content should, should not be like, we don't put a lot of, we don't put gifts there. We don't put, cause, cause again, these people are the cold audience, right? They don't know you yet. They, so, so again, um, just a, a little bit more professional, a little more bit more professional. Formal. Yeah. Okay. And then okay. more, more fun, like, and, you know, welcoming here in the Facebook group and right. also party. last minute. Yeah. The party. And then we, we have also decided to. I don't know if it's going to change in the future, but um, the, 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 the Holy Mass will, be, will stay in YouTube just because we want to protect that safe environment where people mm. can actually, you know, let your guard down. It doesn't have to be so serious because sometimes we have this notion that if it's about church or about um, faith, it has to be serious, right? And yeah, and yeah. so we just want to keep this, fam uh, this family 
um, like uh, this this community um, lighthearted. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to invite all of our attendees and everyone here on Facebook to join the Saint Anthony of Padua's group just to get a chance to navigate and see what you know what types of uh, posts and engagements are, are going on. Um, off the top of your head, uh, what's what's the most popular post uh, or most you know the post that's that's kind of driven the most engagement? I think Sean's got his hand up. Wonderful. So you've got an answer to that. I got an answer. It's a post that's going to go out today, okay. <laughs> tonight. It's going to be. Is it, is it out already? Yeah, I've I've gotten the uh, feedback. Can we play it? it? <laughs> Check out our page, Father Justin Sing Alongs. Yeah, it's 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 live. <laughs> it's out. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. He he definitely took his shoes off during this time in uh, what uh, what do we call it hashtag stay at home. Right, right. Okay. That's Anything great. that's going to focus on engagement, I would say. Yeah. Anything with engagement as your focus, and then again, come come from a place where your audience is, right? Like, yeah. what would make you want to like or comment those posts? And then if you can invite um, fellow members or admins to love the posts in the, instead of like that's also going to increase the the um that gives you more um more chances to be in the news feed of people and also live video compared to recorded video will will get more reach uh, so okay. you Eric, your future webinar should be live <laughs> like this <laughs> right yeah. capitalize on like uh, events i think father justin's birthday really exploded in terms of posts um yeah all i did i just posted one video and like tons of people commented and then tons of other people posted it just capitalize on those special events and yeah. opportunities speaking of just reply oh sorry oh speaking yeah. of events um, I know the Facebook page has a Facebook, it uh, has an event portion and also in Facebook group, you can do uh, invites in both platforms, but I would suggest do it in both because um, with Facebook group, if you do it there, you can invite people. It allows you to invite people. And what happens if you invite people, they get notified and they're like more compelled to engage. Yeah, absolutely. I know you mentioned something earlier about Father Justin be being your quote unquote main character. And uh, certainly that makes a lot of sense for a lot of our parishes where um, our pastors are so loved and they serve us and they, they, you know, they sacrifice so much of their time and talent to, uh, to serving our community and pastoring us. They're there for all the important events, you know, baptisms, marriages, Holy Communion, confirmation, funerals like they're they're there and uh the the surprising thing that you shared with me is that father justin isn't even on social media and uh, and so yet you found a way to continue to make him the um and to kind of highlight him as the main character through video or through pictures or through messaging or you know gifs or gifs or whatever you call them so there's there's other ways and i think that's really encouraging for a lot of our parishes who have pastors who may be social media shy or who um, who won't get onto social media. Uh, there are ways where we can still create a, a main character or create a, a bond to our pastors who are who are still serving us and still love us and still want to be close to us. <clears throat> to just mention a little bit about um, one of our theme days called Testimony Thursdays. And this is where we feature uh, other parishioners and, and parish leaders. So the burden's not entirely on the pastor, even though he's usually the focal point of uh, attention drawing, but it is really a community where, you know, the lay people can really step up and say, hey, you know, like this is my church too. And I have, I have a, lot of thing, I, a lot of things I can share and, and people will really identify. So we're trying to build, build, um, uh, build attraction that way as well and, and build leadership. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. We are coming up at our one hour time and I wanna honor people's time. Certainly I, I, uh, you've given us a wealth of information. If I could offer a call to action as you've, uh, you've given me that wonderful term, it would be to, um, I guess, twofold. One is just try stuff and be okay with failing and, 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 and learning on the go. And the second is join the group. 
and join, uh, join St. Anthony's group, join some of the other parishes group have, and have a look and see what they're doing. Uh, the great thing about parishes is that we're not in competition with each other, we're on the same team. And so we can beg, borrow, and steal all of the good things that other parishes are doing and we can celebrate it. That's the, that's the best thing. So if you see something that in the group that St. Anthony's is doing and it's really working for them, try it out in your parish. I'm sure they would celebrate it and, and, and be happy to, you know, to open the doors and give you the, the Canva doc, uh, you know, designs and to give you all the different things that you need. Okay, so I want to thank you all uh, for joining us on our on our webinar. I thank you to all of our Facebook uh, participants as well. I hope that worked out for you. And to Sean, Peter, and Marge, and the St. Anthony of Padua community, thank you so much for all that you're doing in the mission. Thank you for using your gifts, your time, your talent to continue growing the mission. So God bless you all, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Holy Week. Thank you very much thanks for having us eric i think i heard a pun there did you say thank you for our gyps uh it could have been it could have been i don't <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna wrap it up have a good night everyone good night Bye -bye. Bye.